our final interview, brief chat, is with Dr. Fred Travis, who is recognized around the world as one of the leading researchers on the brain and meditation. Dr. Travis heads the uh, Center for Brain, Consciousness, and Cognition. He's had about 40 studies published in peer-reviewed journals on the effects of meditation on the brain. And I'd just like to ask Fred to show us some charts and comment on what, what we've been talking about. Thank you, Bobby. Uh, so first chart, please. We're going to be talking about the brain. And the reason we're going to talk about the brain is because the brain is the interface between inner and outer. And depending on the quality of your brain function, depending on how you see and hear what I'm saying, depending on your brain function will determine your response. Second thing we're going to talk about the brain is the brain is always changing. Your brain is a river, not a rock. As a river cuts into a hill, as it flows down the hill, so what's happening is the streams of electrical activity over your brain are leaving a mark on your brain. And if the experience is holistic, what it leaves is a greater integrated style of functioning. If it's traumatic, what it does is it leaves a dysfunctional mark on the brain. Next slide. This is what the brain looks like from a traumatic experience. What we have here is the traumatic experience turns on the amygdala. In the men, it turns on the amygdala to the right, which is context. In the women, it turns on the amygdala to the left, which are the details of experience. The amygdala is your fear center. So what this is doing is creating a veil of fear through which you're experiencing the world. So you're hypervigilant. You're vulnerable. You think people don't understand you. Because this is what your brain is telling you. In addition, the amygdala is turning on the fight or flight response. The fight or flight response turns off the front part of the brain. Front part of the brain is the boss of the brain. It's what lets you put things together. Now, next slide. Traumatic experiences have turned on the amygdala. To turn it off, we need an experience that's the opposite of trauma. We need an experience which is holistic and not fragmented. An experience which is silent and not chaotic. And meditation experiences bring these kinds of ex experiences to you. But meditations are different. So we need to choose our meditation thoughtfully. Next slide. There's a lot of information on this slide, so let me take you through it. First, this arrow here on the left is indicating level of cognitive control from lowest to highest. At the highest level of cognitive control are meditations that are in focused attention. These are your concentration meditations. You keep the mind on one thing. You don't let the mind move. When you're doing that, this is what your brain looks like. It's called gamma EEG. It's very fast. It's 20 to 50 cycles per second. Meditations in this category, for instance, are Tibetan Buddhists, loving kindness and compassion. Middle level of control, the category is open monitoring. In these meditations, it's medium level of control because you're letting things go through your mind, but you're not controlling. When you're doing this, you see a, a slower frequency. It's called theta. It looks like this. It goes up and down five to eight times per second. In this category are meditations like mindfulness, zazen. Now, meditations in these first two categories keep the mind in the process of thinking, of doing. They keep the mind in that same veil of fear that PTSD is turned on. And so what's reported is these meditations have very limited effects on reducing PTSD symptoms. The last category, automatic self-transcending, is lowest level of cognitive control. These are meditations which transcend their own activity. These are meditations which allow you to transcend thinking and experiencing your essence, inner pure consciousness, inner self-awareness. And these have to be automatic. They have to be effortless because any doing would not have let that process happen. Transcendental meditation is in this category. Next slide. This is what the brain is doing during transcendental meditation. What we see here is if it's red, it's more active. So the front of the brain is more active. Notice the subcortical areas of the brain are less active, the colored blue. The front of the brain, your integrative system, is more active. It's able to take experience, put it into a whole. The part of the brain that has to do with hypovigilance is now more quiet. What's happening in transcending is you're resetting the mind and body. 
What's happening when you're transcending is those fear signals from the brain are being turned off. What's happening is now the integrative center is able to see the bigger picture. The, the hypervigilance is settling down. TM takes you beyond thinking to silence. Transcending thinking allows you to transcend PDSD. Final slide, bottom line. Every experience changes the brain. Trauma turns on the fear center. It turns off the thinking centers of the brain. Transcending leads to a new state, restful alertness. This restores balanced functioning of mind and body. It relieves PDSD. It supports happiness and success in life. Thank you very much.